There are some elite groups and secret societies in the world that carry with their membership intrigue and prestige. Dark, mysterious societies that few even know of and far fewer will ever have the opportunity to be a member. Skull and Bones, the Illuminati, and Novesky Rifle Owners. Membership in these groups is difficult, if not somewhat impossible, to gain. In some cases, you may even have to pay for a Novesky rifle, which on its own can be a terrifying and formidable task. Well, the good news is, shooting surplus can make it as pain-free as possible, they carry a full lineup of Novesky rifles, and you can save a little cash with the code AA5. What sets Novesky apart from the droves of other AR companies that admittedly charge much less for what to the uninformed might appear to be pretty much the same thing? Well, passion, drive, and the overwhelming desire to build the absolute best. Essentially. Johnny Novesky. When you first pick up a Novesky rifle, the quality is immediately apparent. It is in every single part that you touch. It is in the tightness of the rifle and how all the parts just flow together, not just in a functional way, but cosmetically as well. Johnny Novesky has an interesting background. He actually got started in the firearms industry working at Pacnor on precision rifle barrels when he came up with the idea that Novesky Rifles was founded on, an M4 rifle with a precision rifle barrel. So that's exactly what he did. He founded Novesky Rifle Works in his father's garage with the idea of having an M4 style rifle with a barrel that has the care and craftsmanship of a barrel that would go into a precision rifle. Even after Johnny's passing, the attention to detail and passion lives on. Novesky barrels are held up to tolerances that greatly exceed mil-spec tolerances and are closer to the tolerances expected from precision rifle barrels. They also do things like polygonal rifling, which is harder to do, more expensive, but at least in my experience is more accurate. Check out our HKMR556 video on accuracy. They also are a big believer in polygonal rifling. This is like the baddest looking gun in the freaking world. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. This is a very unique Novesky because it is a Ghetto Blaster, which is a somewhat collaborative project with Q. It uses the same style of proprietary upper and lower that receives the rails for the collapsible stock, making this a very compact package. Originally, a little over a year ago, Novesky launched the Ghetto Blaster, saying there would only be a hundred with that name, and then they would go on to be known as the N4 PDW. Not quite as catchy. It would seem that the name Ghetto Blaster caused a little bit of a PC blowback, so Novesky yanked the name. Well, apparently there was even more blowback of the name being removed, because now Novesky has reintroduced the Ghetto Blaster, so if you wanted one with that engraved on the side, now you can get one once again. Great news for you, somewhat disappointing news for me, since I have one of the originals, and I thought I had something slightly collectible. But I am glad they brought it back, because I love the name. It's fun and much better than the never-ending string of alphanumeric names that always come from the gun industry. If the name Ghetto Blaster offends you on a very deep level, one, I think you need to thank God every day that you have such first world problems that you have the time and effort available to devote to being offended about the name of a gun, which is obviously a joke. But somehow, after a busy day of eating kale and protesting the inequality of urinals, you somehow decide you want one of these guns, but not if it's called Ghetto Blaster. Well, Novesky actually has you covered. They make the exact same gun called N4 PDW. I'm actually slightly more offended by the name N4PDW. Okay, I got something I need to get off my chest. This is an 8-inch 5.56, which is better than a 7-inch 5.56. 
but I remember when I got my first 7 inch 556, I said I would never do that again. But this being my third stupid short 556, I really feel that I don't want any more really short, really stupid 556 rifles. It's kind of like tequila. You know what it's like, you know it's going to be bad, but yet you keep going back for more. Without getting into a huge debate about the effectiveness of 5.56 out of an 8 inch barrel, I'm just going to say that I still wouldn't want to be shot with one. But if you guys want to debate it in the comments section, it is your playground, have a blast. I'll also say that if you're seriously considering a ghetto blaster, I would probably get 300 blackout. If I could do it all over again, I would get 300 blackout even though I already own a honey badger. Let's take a look at the Ghetto Blaster feature for feature and I think we'll start with the buttstock because it's probably the most significant feature. The key to the compact size of the N4 PDW is from the stock assembly which is much shorter than a traditional AR buffer tube. This causes some changes internally and externally. First off, the stock moves on these two rails and is activated by this button. The Ghetto Blaster has three positions for length of pull on the stock, whereas the Honey Badger only has two. The stock moves on two rails that go into the frame, much like that of an MP5. This is amazingly cool to see on an AR style rifle. However, this requires the upper and lower to be milled to receive those rails. I am obviously a huge fan of this design. I actually got the Ghetto Blaster first and then the Honey Badger, and now I've also picked up the Space Invader. This is the exact same design as the Q Honey Badger, and this means that the N4 PDW furniture is completely proprietary and will not work on a traditional upper or lower. The upper and lower are proprietary and beautifully machined, and the quality is evident. The magazine well is absolutely massive to help speed up those reloads, and the forward assist has been completely removed to save weight. The Noveski Ghetto Blaster features Noveski's Gen 4 lower and this thing is really cool. It features ambi controls for both mag release and bolt release, and I have to admit I'm a huge fan of being able to release the bolt with my trigger finger. The Noveski features the Geisley SDE trigger. This trigger is also nice and light weighing in at about 3 pounds and features a prominent reset that is both tactile and audible. There is also a Noveski super badass charging handle, the NHR handguard, which is both light and strong and is topped off with the Q Cherry Bomb muzzle device that allows you to easily attach Q suppressors and you'll also get the Magpul K2 grip along with Magpul Pro M bus sights. All in all, it is a very feature packed rifle. The Ghetto Blaster is an awesome package. It's super compact without making any sacrifices to comfort or ergonomics. I really love the stock system. As I've already said, I think I currently own every gun that the system is on. The gun is ultra tight and just oozes quality everywhere. If you've ever picked up a Honey Badger and felt it was too light or too fragile, which I've run two of them very extensively now and I can say that they're definitely not fragile but I've heard that complaint from a few of the keyboard warriors with their Anderson is just as good t-shirts anyway the ghetto blaster may be right up your alley it weighs in at about five pounds six ounces which is about a pound more than the honey badger and admittedly that weight does make it feel more solid and robust We're probably approaching the 2000 round mark on this gun and it has been nothing but reliable. We've used it in multiple suppressor videos, an optic video, a honey badger versus ghetto blaster video. Anyway, the gun has seen a lot of use in a lot of rounds and it has been 100% reliable. Awesome, awesome. As far as accuracy, it's an 8 inch 556, we didn't actually put it on paper, but I can relatively easily hit a man sized target at 200 yards, so I am more than happy with that. 
so then I just guess it comes to a question of value and worth. Is the Novesky Ghetto Blaster worth the price that it commands? In my eyes, I would say yes, but there is no doubt it is very expensive. The quality is superb, the design is unique, and you're just not going to be able to find another rifle like this off the shelf from many other manufacturers. Plus, you get to join that elite group of Novesky rifle owners. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in getting a Novesky rifle, something from Q, STI, Bruger and Thomet, anybody, all the big names, Shooting Surplus has it, and you can save 5% with the code AA5. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. As always, we got some really big reviews coming that you won't want to miss. And if you want to know what we're working with way before it hits the YouTube channel, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. There you can see what's being reviewed in real time. If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the best possible way to do that is on Patreon. These videos are surprisingly expensive to make and every little bit helps and is greatly appreciated. There's also gear available right below the video if you want to go out and represent. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.